What's up guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess and today's video is going to be a fun topic. Keto and snacking or the evolution of snacking in my journey. Now snacking is one of those topics that's a hot button issue um, and I'm going to answer my thoughts on that based on my own experience, experience losing 120 pounds with a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. But first things first, I do want to stress I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a health expert, I'm not a coach. I am just speaking on behalf of my, my personal journey, rewinding my health from a morbidly obese 309 pounds to a healthy weight. Um, and then the next thing I want to say, if you're new here and you want to see videos about my story, my experience, please hit that subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications so you won't miss any videos. Now. Let's jump into this topic of snacking. So one of the debated topics is snacking. Keto snacking. It's one thing I always get lots of comments about, good and bad, on my channel. So I'm going to go, this video is going to be about the evolution of snacking on my journey. Basically, I'm going to give you a quick walk in the park, down memory, memory lane, on how, what I used to do when I was 309 pounds to what I'm snacking on now at 189 pounds. Yes, you heard me right, down another pound since my last update. Um, I still have one day left in this, or two days left in this month, today and tomorrow, but I've been changing to alternate day fasting. Um, there's a lot of ways to do fasting. There's OMAD, there's 2MAD, there's 20 um, slash 4, there's 16, 8, there's 18, 6, there's so many, 23, 1, there's so many ways to do intermittent fasting. And as someone who's gone on this journey for 14 months now, or a little over 14 months, um, I have tried all of them. And I've had different results for each one, but the point here is try them and see what works best for you. The cool thing about fasting is it will fit into your schedule how you need it to work. Um, it's custom and you can experiment and see for yourself what's working and what's not working. So when it comes to snacking, when I started my journey on February 11th, 2019, weighing in at 309 pounds, I just come from the standard American diet, fully inflamed, eating 12 times a day, um, and switched to a ketogenic diet with fasting. It's like, whoa! So I went from eating, I, I, would, I would have two meals a day, but I would also have like four snacks. So it was easily, and when you think of snack, oh man, I ate so much food when I first started, but I was also morbidly obese. Remember, 309 pounds at five feet eight, morbidly obese. Um, so I got away with a lot in the beginning that I cannot get away with now in my journey. <laughs> so um, I have, I have, I've watched my evolution in my journey change and evolve because the cool thing is with all the, when you try things out for yourself and you don't just look at somebody else's journey and say, well, they did this, it's not working for me, I'm going to give up. Instead of giving up, remember that we're not all the same. Our bodies are all different. We've all been damaged differently. We all react differently to foods. You have to practice or experiment on yourself and give it like a month before you just throw in the towel because it's just, you gotta do all that practice, you gotta do the trial and error to see what works for you. We are different, we lose weight differently. So, in the beginning of my journey, I could snack and eat whatever I wanted and that's the eating window and I did 16-8 when I first started. So, in that 16-8, I would probably at least get six times, or six attempts at food in my body. Um, now, like say, let's go about halfway through the journey, I was like, the weight loss had slowed once I got into about like 80 pounds down. My weight loss was like leveling out a little because when I started it was a really steep drop and that was probably a lot of the inflammation, it was probably a lot of the bloat and you know leaving my body and it was maybe inflated numbers at the beginning. Um, so then once I hit about 80 pounds it kind of went more of a it was going down, but it wasn't sharp down. So it slowed down. I'm like, whoa. So that's when I learned that I have to limit my dairy. I have to limit my sweeteners. If you look at past videos, really old ones, I was eating tons of dairy, tons of keto sweets um, because I could. 
And then once the weight loss slowed down, you don't just throw in the towel, you reevaluate and you adjust your sail and you keep on sailing. So I stopped, or I should say, I limited dairy. I limited like, um, I just I just was smart with the snacking. I was smart with the um, the sweets and the treats. I knew that those were triggers. Sometimes it was hard to just have one sixteenth of the cake. I wanted four sixteenths of the cake, you know. So what I'm trying to say is I learned a lot about me um, at that point. So I readjusted, kept sailing. Well, I'm approaching Wonderland and it seemed like it took like two months to cross over into Wonderland. Uh, so, and I was like, I was so frustrated, so incredibly frustrated. Um, but I just kept going and kept doing what I was doing and then I discovered alternate day fasting, another version of um, fasting. So I, I was scrolling and it came, a, a video popped up in my YouTube and it was Dr. Jason Fung. Love him, uh, his videos are just like no other. Um, and this particular video that struck a nerve with me was about frequency of eating matters more than what you're eating. And I'm like, what? That's not true. How could that be true? So I kept listening to the video. I heard him out. And basically what he was saying is if you count how many times you eat in a day, you're telling your body, eat food, eat food, store fat, store fat, spike insulin, spike insulin each time you eat or snack. So even in like an eight hour snacking or an eight hour window of when you can eat during the day, I thought I took a tally and I looked at how many times I was actually eating in that day. And I was still eating like six times a day. And that's because if you actually kept a little piece of paper in your kitchen, every time you go into the pantry, you grab a handful of nuts. Every time you go into the fridge and grab a bite of string cheese or pepperoni or, um, you know, whatever, a perfect keto bar, like a, a keto snack, you know, a sweet treat, uh, what, some recipe you found. If you actually put a tally down each time in a day how many times you eat, you'll be surprised. It was eye-opening and it was like, dang it, <laughs> another thing I'm going to change, you know. So, But that's what the journey is about. The journey is about evolving and learning this stuff because someone who's thin they're intuitively eating. They don't need to snack all day. Like it's why they're just thin. They just eat when they're hungry and they stop. And that is the message that's sent to your insulin by not eating constantly and spiking the insulin all day. You're keeping your insulin like here. And it says, hey, use the fat we have on board. We don't have any here. So that's, it was just like a light bulb turned on my head about the frequency and the insulin spikes and the whole point of everything is to keep your sugar low. So I was like, okay, this month I'm gonna change my keto snacking. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna change it. So over the last month, and additionally to eating the alternate day fasting schedule, and I'm gonna post, the, post all the videos wherever it is here, I'm gonna make a playlist for alternate day fasting and what I've learned. So I'll put those there. Um, but I was like, I'm going to still have my keto snacks and my keto treats, but I am literally going to eat twice a day, lunch and dinner. So over the last month, I will still have my treats. So say I have, I break my fast at lunch. I have my eggs, three eggs, two pieces of bacon, um, or Canadian bacon or, you know, sausage or whatever I have with it and cooked in butter or bacon grease. That's my lunch, and then I end it with my keto snack. So today, for instance, just to make it easy, I did a perfect keto chocolate chip bar. And then shut the door on the eating window. That's close. I am nice and full. I don't need to eat. Like, it's right now, it's 2.05 p.m. Still plenty full. Don't feel like I'm starving. Don't feel like I need to snack. Where before, I would come back at about 3 and grab a snack, a bar, a handful of nuts, were like my go-to's, my easy go-to's. Um, and then I just go about my business. But that was, that was an opportunity that I spiked my insulin that I didn't pay attention to before, I wasn't aware of. So that was before. Now I put the snack with my meal. So that basically means I take my allotted macros for the day and I divide them into day, two meals. And it's also intuitive eating because if I, some days I'm hungrier than others. 
Some days I just ate lunch and didn't need the snack after the lunch. I was full with the lunch. So, but it's not every day. Some days I have a snack on top of it. Some days I have that handful of nuts on top of it, you know? Um, but to, today I wanted the snack. <laughs> so, but I'm not gonna eat again till dinner. However, I do drink throughout the day. We'll be drinking all day. Waters, clear liquids, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not strict about that part. Um, but then come dinner, I'll have my dinner. And I'll have, I have, I made keto brownies the other day and I'll have one of those brownies with homemade peanut butter on it. So I'll have it then. I'm not going to have it at eight o'clock at night. I'm having it when I have my dinner and I shut the door down again. So I hope that makes sense. I'm having the snacks and the treats with the meal. I'm not eating in between. <laughs> not eating all then. So, and over the last month, eating that way dropped 10 pounds off my off my scale so there seems to be some method in the madness that dr fung's on some something here it matters more about the frequency than what you're eating so by taking away all the other insulin spikes that you normally have and limiting to two two opportunities for spikes because it doesn't matter what you eat doesn't matter how fat or thin you are everybody gets the insulin spikes it's what our body does, but you're limiting to how many times it's going to spike. That's the difference. So I hope that makes sense. I hope the evolution of snacking made sense, how I used to snack and eat for eight hours in a day, up to like six to eight times a day I was in the beginning of my journey. Then I was about halfway through my journey, I was snacking like twice a day. Now I'm not snacking at all. It's with my meal. It's tacked right on with my meal. So, and then again, why is the snacking issue a big debate in the keto community? Well, the thought process behind it is when you eat fat, it stays with you longer and it keeps you fuller and you don't have the need for snacking. It allows your body to say, hey, you're full, you don't need anything. But on the standard American diet, you are eating a carbohydrate, your body processes that really fast and now you're hungry again. So every time you have maybe had this massive bagel for breakfast you're hungry in an hour at least i was i was hungry constantly it was one of the allures to the ketogenic diet in the first place and intermittent fasting in the first place is because i was hungry all the time i never felt full i could just eat and eat and eat and i got bigger and bigger and bigger and i got to 309 pounds so what's different now is i feel fuller longer my hormones that are saying my ghrelin and leptin are saying eat stop eating and I'm just going about my merry way and I'm eating and I feel satisfied I'm eating intuitively and I feel like this is how I'm going to maintain my weight this is how I move forward so I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you agree on the snacking if you're even going to try the snacking how many times see I my homework to you is to get a piece of paper and put it in the refer and put it in your kitchen with a pen and every time you put something in your mouth mark it down and see how many times you're eating in a day it's eye-opening it's humbling but most of all it will teach you what to do so i'm jess and you're watching keto rewind have a great one <laughs> happy snacking <laughs>